Welcome to our webinar this evening. We're going to be speaking about the return of the magicians, of the ancient shamans of the Andes that lived in mountaintops where they could not be found by the Inquisition, by the church, or by the state for many, many hundreds of years. So I'd like to welcome you all this evening. We're going to wait for a few minutes before we start for callers that are still signing in. And I want to tell you a little bit about the Four Winds Society, which I founded over 30 years ago. And our mission at the Four Winds is to train modern shamans. Our training programs are designed to combine the best of the ancient wisdom of the medicine traditions with cutting-edge neuroscience and physics and integrative medicine. Because today we are in a tremendous crisis and we have a need for healers. This is really what we signed up for before we were born. And what you can do at the Four Winds Society is come and awaken those gifts and those skills that we all have, but that need to be developed. They need to be awakened so that we can dream a healed world into being. And we can do that today. Come and check out our website, check out our programs. We have a brand new 28 day training, 300 hour training, which compacts our former two year long training into a single 28 day period, or two 14 day segments. Today we don't have any time to waste. We have to develop our gifts and bring them to the world, make a difference in the world today. We cannot wait until we are skinny enough, or tall enough, or old enough, or young enough, or have enough time, or enough money. The calling is now, and it's up to each one of us to say yes. So welcome to our webinar this evening. I want to tell you about the ancient magicians. These are the men and women that we're going to be visiting with this summer in our annual expedition to Peru. I started traveling to Peru many years ago, many years ago when hardly anyone was going there because there were terrorists in the land. I remember having Machu Picchu to myself many, many nights with no one else around. And I was one of the few anthropologists working in this region. And I had the privilege of meeting extraordinary medicine men and women that lived in al at altitudes from 16 to 18,000 feet. Um, villages that had been disconnected from the rest of the Andean communities in order to preserve an ancient body of wisdom and of prophecy. When I first went to these villages, I was welcomed actually as a great medicine man. And uh, the reason for this is that the first visits that I took to the villages, I saw that many of the babies of the children had big distended bellies. And even though these men and women had had no contact with the West, they had had contact with other indigenous people who had been in touch with white people and brought to them the illnesses of civilization. Now we know how to treat diarrhea, and we know how to treat parasites, so I went into the mountains with Western medication. I was on, you know, I don't put this down in my resume, but it was amazing the difference that it made for these babies. So I was welcomed by their shamans because I was healing their children. Later on we went to also work with their yamas and their animals. But this gave me unprecedented access to men and women who were the keepers of a millenary wisdom. And even though they were the descendants of the Incas, they were the ancient magicians. Their wisdom went back 50,000 years to a body of knowledge that gestated and germinated at the foothills of the Himalayas. And it was brought across the Bering Straits by their great-grandfathers and grandmothers when during one of the glacial periods they were able to, able to make this great crossing. Some of them, of course, came by sea from Micronesia and Indonesia, which was the other source of migrations to the Americas. And these were the last of the ancient wisdom keepers. For many years we took medical missions up to the mountains and for many years I took our students into the ancient ceremonial sites of the Inca and the pre-Inca people. 
sites like Machu Picchu, like Sacsayhuaman, ancient sites that are architectural marvels. They're, they're temples built in the clouds by extraordinary architects, by men and women who knew the motion of the stars, who could tell when the uh, eclipses and the um, uh, were happening a hundred years into the future. Astronomers, mathematicians, architects, they were of course destroyed, devastated by the Spanish. In the last few years, given the tremendous crisis that we're living in on the planet, I have been gathering with the elders every year to do a reading of the pulse of the earth where they actually feel the pulse of the planet, of Mother Earth. And they can tell the, uh, the Earth changes that we're facing today. The, uh, the changes in climate, the changes in sea, in the oceans, the changes in the atmosphere. They have a living dialogue with Mother Earth. And this happens during a reading of the prophecy. But the prophecy is not only information. The prophecies are not only foretelling what might come in the future. For the shamans of the Andes who come from a distinctly feminine tradition, which means that information is not necessarily wisdom or knowledge. They differentiate between the two. It's information is knowing that water is H2O. Wisdom is knowing how to make it rain. Very, very different. And of course, we tend to confuse the two. So what we do in these journeys is that we work with the medicine men and women to bring down a destiny for ourselves and for the earth that can help us to create a sustainable future. So the journeys that we're making are not only archeological and cultural and anthropological, they're deeply transformative. And today we know that in order for us to transform and evolve and become awakened beings, that we have to do that in a, from a place of service to Mother Earth. And the more that we can be of service to the Earth, the more that we align our own intentions with the intentions of the planet, the more successful that we become in our lives. And success, of course, is measured in the shamanic context by your degree of enlightenment and illumination. These are extraordinary ceremonies that we do. In ancient sites, surrounded by millenary temples, surrounded by ancient mountains that are snow-capped, that are the source of the Amazon itself. The important thing during these journeys is that you come with the intention to respond to your calling, to say yes to a calling that we all have. I want to share a story with you, which was shared, told to me by one of my teachers. He said to me one time, because the shamans believe that we keep coming back, lifetime after lifetime. <clears throat> and he said to me, Alberto, a very long time ago, before we were born, we were all gathered in a great green field, this beautiful grassy field, and a very, very big archangel came out and said to all of us, you know, this is going to be a very challenging time for the earth. There's going to be epidemics, there's going to be war, there's going to be terrorism, there's going to be famine, there's going to be climate change. And we need healers. Who wants to come? And all of us volunteered. Each and every one of us listening to this show and to this program. Each and every one of us volunteered to come here to be part of the solution. To come and, and create a new world, dream a new world into being that has all the ingredients that are necessary for our children's children to live in a world that is joyful, peaceful, where the air is clean, where the waters are drinkable, that they can inherit a future that they can be born into. And this is the work that we go to do in the Andes. If you want to visit Peru and simply go to the archaeological sites, go with someone else. But if you want to be part of this revolution that is taking place today, where you're going to be informed directly into a global mission that we're all carrying to dream a new world into being, this is the laboratory 
that I want to invite you into, that I want you to come and join me in this summer. Because here's where we incubate not only our own healing, but a new human that is appearing on the earth today. You know, biologists say that evolution happens in between generations. That maybe our children will be smarter and better looking than we are, but that it's too late for us. And shamans recognize this. They know that evolution happens gradually in between generations. But they know that that's not the only system that operates in this great arena of evolution, of biology. They know that evolution can also happen through quantum leaps. That evolution can happen within generations. That we can uncoil our DNA code another strand and become a new human and actually grow a new body that heals differently and that ages differently. This is what our task is today. We didn't come here simply to uh, smell the flowers, which is great actually, we should be doing more of that. But we came here to take part in the evolution of a new human that is being born in the planet. And it's not our children's children, they also. It's us. It's you. It's me. We're the ones that are ready to take this quantum leap into the future, to grow a luminous body that we can take with us beyond this lifetime. I remember asking one of my teachers one time, what's the object of all of this shamanic training? And I mean, I'm feeling better already. I've been able to shed some of my stories from my family and, the, and my past and the, some of the stories of scarcity and the stories of of pain and suffering that really run in, that ran in my family. I was able to clear those from my field and from my history. And this old man said to me, Alberto, two things. First is that the object of shamanism is to learn how to get out of this life alive. We want to learn how to get out of this life alive so we can take our consciousness with us into our journey through the stars, into infinity. And the second thing is that we did not come here to grow corn only. We didn't come here to grow corn alone. We came here to grow gods. And the way that we grow gods is to awaken that light within us because we are beings of light. And when you visit these ancient archeological sites where we work, um, during our Peru expeditions, during this laboratory in consciousness, you feel these ancient beings coming and sitting in ceremony with us. Men and women that have defied death, that have attained their immortality by individuating as luminous beings. Men and women that realize that they are spiritual beings that have an occasional biological experience and not biological beings that are having a spiritual experience. And they come and they join us in ceremony. We visit temples that are seldom seen by any Westerners. And we have over many years, I've been working with these medicine men and women, with their parents, uh, for over 30 years. I saw some of the shamans that we work with today in diapers, except of course they don't use diapers in the Andes. So the, uh, the nature of our relationship with them is one where they are willing to disclose their innermost teachings, which they do not do very often. There's a lot of spiritual tourism, of course, in Peru today, but they understand that our agenda is deeply lined up with their agenda, which is not only about their people thriving and surviving this time of cataclysmic change, it's about all of humanity being able to not only survive but thrive and develop a new relationship and a new destiny here in planet Earth. So, the, so these ancient archaeological sites are absolutely stunning. You're seeing some of these images right now and some of our groups as we meditate and work in places like Morai, which is an ancient temple where the Ancestors of the Inca bred and crossbred their wisdom and their corn. And, the, um, and in these ancient sites that are still infused with an extraordinary energy and an extraordinary power. Energy and power that translates into wisdom 
because energy devoid of wisdom is simply heat. Whereas energy that is infused with wisdom is very biologically operative. It begins to upgrade your own biology. It begins to awaken neural networks in the brain that have been dormant for millennia, but that we were all born with. And for many years now, I've been fascinated with the human brain. And, the, um, and one of my recent books was with Dr. David Perlmutter about the neuroscience of enlightenment. And the, um, and the big debate, of course, in, uh, in neuroscience is whether the consciousness is created by the brain, is an epiphenomenon of the brain, or if the brain is created by consciousness. Now, we subscribe to the latter theater, theory, that this growing consciousness that is growing in the earth has given rise to this extraordinary neurological apparatus that we hardly use and uh, for more than fixing a cup of coffee in the morning and uh, cruising the internet and occasionally doing the New York Times crossword puzzle when it's the equipment that we need to grow gods. So in these ancient archaeological sites, deep in ceremony, with the shaman's diet that we do during our expeditions in our classes, we're able to begin to detox the body, to awaken these higher order neural networks and to become those humans that we've been calling into being for so long. So I invite you to look at our program. If you're called to join us, respond to the call now. The, uh, the, the benefit that you will get from it, besides the stunning journey and experience, is that we'll be signing up and taking part for a mission that is greater than you or I, which is the dreaming of a new world into being. And after all, this is what we came here to do. When we raised our hand and said to that big angel, count me in, you can count on me, I can be relied upon, sign me up. This is what we came to do. Of course, since we were born and we started going to school, we've been told that our mission is different, that we were supposed to get a job, get married, have two kids and a white picket fence and buy the right car and eventually retire and die. This is not what we came to do. Of course, you can get married, you can have two dogs and a child and a car, but what we came to do is to grow gods. And in these ancient places where men and women have gathered to pray for millennia, where their energy is so palpable and so extraordinarily strong, we can awaken these divine qualities within us. But these divine qualities will only awaken if you have set your intention to be of service to the earth to create a little bit more healing, a little bit more beauty, a little bit more consciousness, a little bit more light in your world and in the world around us. Check out our programs, I invite you to join us and the, um, our office, our people are standing by after this call. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them and, the, um, and I'll see you in Peru. Thank you for joining me this evening. And again, visit our website, thefourwinds.com or call us for more information. All of our staff are graduates from our Light Body School, and they have, many of them have been to Peru with us, and they all share in this mission that we have, which is to transform the world by training one healer at a time, by training contemporary shamans, men and women, that know the ways of the world of form and of the world of formlessness, the world of spirit, the world of matter. Thank you very much for joining me this evening.